In our last video, we compared the PowerBeats Pro to Apple's AirPods, but a number of you out there have asked how the new PowerBeats stack up against the older PowerBeats 3 wireless. And so if you're looking to purchase either one of these headphones but are stuck deciding, or if you're wondering if you should upgrade from the PowerBeats 3 wireless to the PowerBeats Pro, then this video might help you out. The PowerBeats 3 are not truly wireless headphones, like the pros. And so the first major difference is obviously the wire that connects the PowerBeats 3 earbuds to one another. Some people might like that wire as it kind of adds an extra level of security. Like if an earbud gets dislodged from your ear or if you need to take one out to listen to your surroundings or talk to somebody at the gym, you can let them dangle around your neck and kind of worry less about losing that earbud. Now, while the PowerBeats Pro are larger in footprint to something like AirPods, it still might be a little easier to misplace one of these if you don't actually put them directly back into their charging case, since there is no wire connecting them to each other. But there's no question that a wire-free experience is overall more convenient in most situations. Other than that, these headphones both kind of share a similar ear hook style design, and the fit inside of the ear is more snug, which helps isolate the music from other noises around you. They're actually both pretty comfortable in my opinion, but I think I prefer the fit and feel of the PowerBeats Pro. I think the reason for that might be the fact that Apple stated they redesigned the angle of these headphones and they do kind of fit a little bit differently on your ear compared to the uh, wireless threes. Uh, so maybe that's the reason why, but I'm not totally sure. I just, I prefer the feel of the PowerBeats Pro. I'm also really not used to having a wire anymore, but that's not really something that like gets in the way of my fit and feel, just something to point out. You do also get four sets of uh, ear tips included with each pair, so finding the right fit for you shouldn't really be that difficult. There's only one physical button on the PowerBeats 3, which is actually your power button, and then media playback and phone call controls can be done using the buttons on the wire. The middle button can play pause or skip forward and back between tracks, depending how many times you actually press the button. And then there is also a volume up and down control too. With the PowerBeats Pro, controlling media can be done by tapping either the Beats logo on the left or right side of the headphone. Either one does the same function. Uh, there's also separate volume buttons above the logo on each headphone as well. I much prefer the playback controls on the pros here. I love the option of using either headphone for media playback, kind of whatever's convenient for me at the moment. Both headphones also come with cases, but the winner here by far goes to the PowerBeats Pro because it doubles as a battery that's used for providing extra power. The PowerBeats 3's case is just a rubber pouch that you kind of have to shove your headphones inside of. You still need to use a micro USB charging cable to charge these things. Pairing with the PowerBeats Pro is as simple as opening up the charging case with the headphones inside near your iPhone thanks to the H1 chip. While to pair the PowerBeats 3 wireless, you need to turn them on, then hold that power button for about five seconds until the light starts flashing. The PowerBeats 3 do use the W1 chip, which is the same chip found in the first generation AirPods, so you do get the same simple pairing and device switching that you get with the PowerBeats Pro. The PowerBeats Pro also give you Bluetooth 5.0, which should lend to a more stable connection and longer distance range between your headphones and your device over the PowerBeats 3. The H1 chip improves pairing times and adds Hey Siri support, something that's not an option on PowerBeats 3 wireless. You can access Siri, however, with the PowerBeats 3 by pressing on the middle remote button, but there's no hands-free access. The charging case for the PowerBeats Pro offers up to 24 hours of additional playback time, and the PowerBeats Pro themselves can give users up to nine hours for each earbud. If we jump over to the PowerBeats 3 wireless, you have a 12 hour battery lifespan, but there's no charging case and there's no extra battery life. There is a fast fuel option that gives users an hour of playback in just five minutes of charging, which is actually the exact same PowerBeats Pro fast fuel feature too. But the convenience of using the charging case for a wireless charge is a lot more convenient, obviously, than carrying a cable in your pouch and then having to find that cable and find a place to charge your headphones. To be honest, convenience is really the main theme of this video. If you're considering purchasing either one of these headphones and price is not a driving factor, the PowerBeats Pro offer way more functionality and features and a more premium feel than the wireless threes. Now there isn't a drastic difference in sound quality between the two headphones, however, but the PowerBeats Pro have a bit more of a balanced sound. My issue with Beats overall in the past were that they were always too bass heavy and the PowerBeats Pro do not give me that feeling. After going back to the wireless threes for this video and testing them out, 
it was immediate just how much more low end these headphones put out, and it really kind of muddied up some of the songs for me. That's not to say that it sounds bad, but comparing between the two, I much prefer the sound profile and quality from the Powerbeats Pro. Sweat and water resistance is also a pretty big factor, and according to the Beats website, the Powerbeats 3 are sweat and water resistant, but they don't actually give you an IPX rating, and some users have complained about them being damaged easily by water. The Powerbeats Pro do offer an IPX4 rating, which means they're certified to hold up to splashes of water. And while we don't have a clear picture of how the Powerbeats Pro are going to hold up in moisture over time, it's likely that they will fare better than the Powerbeats 3 given the official rating. Many of you also wanted to know about the ear hook and its durability, and I don't get the sense that the Powerbeats Pro ear hooks are going to break as easily or aren't as durable, and the hooks do feel a bit more secure and sturdy compared to the hooks on the Powerbeats 3. At the time of this video, you can find the Powerbeats 3 wireless on sale anywhere from $99 up to $200 on their official website, but I was able to pick them up in stores for around $120. The Powerbeats Pro are nearly double that amount, but do have the same premium quality and sound and features to back up the extra cash. Personally, I think the Powerbeats Pro would be a tremendous upgrade over the Powerbeats 3. You do get an all new truly wireless design, better sound quality, Haste 3 functionality, better media playback controls, a better carrying case that charge your Powerbeats while you're on the move, etc. To me, it's just a lot better than the Powerbeats 3 wireless. So let me know in the comment section down below if you have Powerbeats 3 and you're looking to upgrade, and if you decided to make that switch, or if you're deciding between the two, let me know which one you went with in the comment section down below. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.